force feedback kicks in right away. And you can really feel how bumpy these old cars are that I'm using, uh, which is great. The wheel can be a little bit loud when the force feedback is doing its thing, particularly if any sudden jolts or jostling. As we go through the corners, the, uh, the wheel wakes up nicely. So the pedals feel great. There's a great distinction uh, between the accelerator and the brake. And also the clutch and the brake, but the accelerator and the clutch do feel very similar. The, um, the lights on the wheel are very handy. You can see them just in your periphery. Then you went to shift. I've got no more gears, so I can't shift up. And uh, I suppose what you want to know about really is the force feedback. And the force feedback is very, very active. There's lots of fidelity to it. Also strength as well. It does, it does feel like it's got more oomph than the G29 did. Uh, my car's not set up right, as you can see. I'm <laughs> just getting absolutely mobbed. That's okay. Lovely cars going past us. So yeah, all in all, this is a far more pleasurable driving experience than the G29 because that, uh, that wobble that we had on the G29 is gone. So everything now feels very direct. What more could we ask for? Well, Logitech have given us some more. They've given us true force, and that's what we're going to talk about next. Because far too few reviewers talk about it or even know it's there or what to do with it. So let's take a look at that. So what is true force and what to do? It does quite a few things, actually, but what we're going to focus on uh, is something that Thrustmaster played around with when they released their Gran Turismo Sport wheel. And that was using attenuators to actually give you the experience of a revving engine. There's a few games which use True Force. There's a grid. For example, uh, SnowRunner also uses True Force. I've just discovered today, completely by accident, that Seto Corsa Competizione on the PC uses True Force. Let me tell you about it. Uh, I'm in the pits. I've just started my engine, as you do. Uh, wheel works. That's always good to know. And through the wheel, I can feel the engine ticking over. Give it a bit of a rev. You might even hear that through the, um, the microphone. Um, I'm feeling the engine rev through the wheel, which is pretty impressive. Let's uh, head out to track. So this is something that's happening independently from the um, from the force feedback. The faster I go, the louder and more violent this gets on the wheel. And it almost seems like the wheel itself has this underlying vibration that mimics the, the sound of the engine. And that's exactly what it does. The, the true force analyzes the engine note and it puts vibration through the wheel to give you that sensation of feeling the entire car judder. Now, on a table, as I've got it right now, because I've put my cockpit away, um, you know, it feels okay. It's going up through my arms, and it's, uh, it's, it's an extra sensory thing I can use, particularly when it comes to changing gear. Um, I did have this wheel on my play seat challenge. And that made the entire seat vibrate, particularly when I turned up the, the true force. And that was brilliant. So that's that's like getting force feedback all over your body. It's feeling the, the, the revs. It's feeling when it's time to downshift. And it's a great racy sensation on, on both this and on grid. But also, it was a big deal on SnowRunner because it really gives you that feeling of awesome power that the engines produce, the, the big trucks and such like. Uh, the whole wheel's going boom, 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 as you massive engines tick over. I'm not going to go too fast because, to be honest with you, I can't talk and drive at the same time. I don't know if any of you also have that same issue. There we go. So that was great. So just then, uh, I felt the, uh, the engine revving quite slowly as I went into that corner, but I also felt the force feedback uh, as well. Oh, there we go, off the track. 
So what I'm going to do also is I'm going to head into the pits and I'm going to reposition the microphone and I'm going to let you listen to the wheel uh, without the game audio. And you'll get some idea then of the true force uh, in action. Let's do that. Oop, I think I just stalled. My bad. I've commented on forums and uh, other people's reviews who don't seem to be interested in the true force and it's being dismissed as a gimmick but when does it stop being a gimmick? do you know what I mean? Um, ACC's got this now and if ACC's got it well that's a pretty big deal really because such a course of competition is a pretty big deal as far as gaming goes I think the uh, the big the big tell of the future for True Force is going to be if Codemasters carry it on with the next titles for your uh, you know your F1 21 project cars for next dirt rally perhaps and for the more simulation hungry people, you know, are we going to see it implemented in truck simulator games? Are we going to see it implemented in R Factor, perhaps, or iRacing? At which point, you know, it ceases to be a gimmick because suddenly it becomes cool. Not something I'm particularly fond of, but there you go. So, in conclusion, who's this wheel for? Should you buy it? Should you upgrade? And of course, most importantly, is it any good? You know, well, it feels great. It feels better than the G29. Uh, it's so much more accurate. Force feedback's better. The true force does add an extra level of immersion. Yeah, same build quality as the G29. Uh, there was nothing wrong with it. There was no need to change the way the G29 was put together, except for that gearing, which Logitech had fixed, as I've said before which really was my biggest bugbear with the G29. The the shifters are slightly different, but they feel great. And of course, thanks to the force feedback, there's a very satisfying clunk that goes with them. They are still metal. They do still feel very strong, uh, which I'm very pleased about. Pedals feel great, especially the, um, the brake pedal, which I, you know, it uh, again adds extra level of immersion because the pedals are a different strength We my back end. As you can see, I don't play this game very often. I'd love to play it more. Let's talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the price tag. If you've already got a G29, I think it's pretty pointless upgrading to the 923. Um, you know, unless you've got a lot of money and you play games that only have the True Force logo on them. If you've got uh, a wheel such as a Logitech G29 or a Thrustmaster 300 or a Fanatec CSL Elite, you're probably not going to want to upgrade to this wheel. Don't get me wrong, it's better than the G29, but only marginally. Certainly not enough to warrant the... Um, the price tag if you're looking for a first wheel oops again this could be it you know this is a, a this is a great first wheel did the hand stitched leather amazing uh the, the wheel clamp is awesome it's gonna help you put it anywhere you want and if you're playing a variety of racing games you've got your great shifters here if you're playing games that involve bigger vehicles, such as truck simulators or off-road games, having the shifter compatibility is brilliant. When I reviewed the Logitech G29, I absolutely gushed over it. And I've got to say, I couldn't go back to it. Not after driving this. It's just too good. 
it's, it's much better than my driving, as you can see. It's not all positive to this wheel. Uh, first of all, Forza games don't seem to be particularly friendly with this wheel. The reason I say that is because Forza Horizon, or you really have to fiddle around with the settings on. Uh, because otherwise, the back end of your car is just in front of you more often than not. It's a very, very strange, almost, you know, immersion breaking experience to use this wheel on Forza Horizon 4. It's even worse on Forza Motorsport 7, where the wheel itself barely registers. Uh, you may as well not be steering on it. And on both games, the force feedback is just abysmal. I didn't have that issue with the G29. I don't know what's caused that. Looking forward, is this a wheel for the future? The G923 is going to support the PS5. Also, the Xbox Series X is going to be supported by the Xbox Cans part of this wheel. And all the time, those wheels are both be supported by PC. Apart from those compatibility issues, I honestly can't pick fault with it. This is the, the finest thing I've ever reviewed. Gush, gush. Just a reminder, Logitech did not send me this wheel. I owe them nothing. 